Okay, so what we do need to do now is to build, again, a, a systematic tool in order to compute the velocity propagation along the structure, linear and angular velocities. And uh, we will uh, compute the velocities of a link i with respect to the previous one, so i minus 1 in order to understand uh, the way each uh, joint velocity contributes to the end effect of velocity. And in doing so, we will build our Jacobian. So here we need to focus the attention on two consecutive frames. So we use the DH convention and we defined a frame attached to each of the links. So now let us consider a generic uh, I frame that, that's origin is on the joint I plus one due to the H convention. And then there is a frame I minus one. We do have uh, two position vectors for the two frames with respect to the base frame. And then there is uh, a position vector connecting the origin on the two frames. Okay, those are the quantities that we need to focus on. Okay, so linear velocity. It may <coughs> seem a little bit complex, but let us think what I'm doing. I'm just saying this vector is given by the sum of those two vectors. Okay, just vector composition. However, the second one needs to be written in base frame. So here, I write a vector in a more or less complex way. The subscript means R is I minus one comma I, means I'm connecting the region of uh, frame I minus one to the region of frame I. And then here, the superscript means expressed in frame i minus y. Why? Because this is constant in this frame. So I do have this number. It's a vector of three numbers. But in order to have uh, a current vector sum, I need to rotate this vector in the base frame. Here, there is not written zero. When you don't have any subscript, uh, superscript, it means that is in base frame, okay? Okay, let us make the time derivative. It's the time derivative of the first, plus then I have to make the first, the rotation matrix, uh, not derivated, multiplied by the time derivative of the vector position, plus uh, here I have a cross product uh, uh, this is what we just saw a few minutes ago, okay? Now, this is equal. I'm just modifying this. I told you this is constant in this frame. Uh, okay, this is not true. It's constant only for rotational joint. Okay, so you will see later. But rotation matrix No, this term here, no, rotation matrix is never constant. We are always changing all. Here, we already wrote the results as we compute here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So this is the results by applying the. the okay. So now I have the sum of, of three terms. Let me a little bit check the meaning of the three terms. The first one is uh, the velocity of the origin of a frame I minus one, okay? So it's moving somewhere in 3D, and so the composition P dot I is given by the sum of P dot I min minus one, plus, this is the relative linear velocity, okay? In case I is moving with respect to I minus one, there is a term to add, 
plus this is the contribution to the angular velocity. It's the same as the disk that we saw. If a rigid body rotates, it gives a contribution to the linear velocity. So the sum of three terms. What about the angular velocity? Well, I'm going to skip the computations for the angular velocity and give you directly the result because the result is very, very easy, easy also to remember. So if you want to, to see all the, 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 the steps, some of them are here, some other in the books, otherwise you come to me, but the result is so easy to understand it to remember that maybe it's uh, better if I just say that the angular velocity of rigid body high is the angular velocity of the prism one plus the relative angular velocity. Okay, so it's really intuitive, it's very, it's very simple. Actually, when you have a rigid body that is uh, moving with linear and angular velocity, <coughs> And the linear velocity change every point of the rigid body, but the angular velocity is the same. Okay, so in a rigid body, the angular velocity does not change. The linear velocity, yes. The propagation of the angular velocity along the structure is given by this very simple and intuitive equation. So we do have the two equations that we need but just rewritten in a way that will be useful to build the Jacobian, okay? Nothing different from physics, from the first exam in physics that you have, may eventually have done. Okay, so here the two equations are simply rewritten, okay? Angular and uh, angular velocity and linear velocity. And then we need to differentiate if the joint is, is prismatic or rotation. Because two links, the relative motion of two links is not arbitrary. By definition, the way we define a robot is a serial chain of rigid bodies connected by a one degree of freedom joint. And we consider only two kinds of joints, prismatic, linear movement or rotation, angular movement. So we can specify those two equations for those two possibilities. Okay, let's see. If the joint is prismatic, it means that the body I is translating with respect to the body I minus one. So there is no relative angular velocity, okay? Omega, I minus Y, I minus, uh, I minus one comma I is equal zero, okay? Then uh, for a prismatic joint, the way I defined uh, the frames, so this is a result of the DH convention, allow me to say that the relative linear velocity is the velocity of the DH parameter, is exactly the velocity of the motor, okay? This is uh, uh, one of the added value of using the DH convention. We do have uh, that D is exactly related to the motor, it is a linear motor, and the dot is providing us uh, the amplitude of the relative velocity with direction z. So we do know the direction, and we know that uh, this is the joint derivative. z is just a unit vector? z i minus one is a unit vector, but is configuration dependent, of course, because my robot is moving. Okay, omega i is equal omega i minus one, but this is uh, just a consequence of this one, and p dot i is given by this expression. Okay? Is it complicated or not? I don't care. 
I will make my software computing it. Now the important is that I do understand, not that I'm able to make the computations. Okay. For a rotational joint, it's a little bit easier. What is the relative uh, velocity? Well, exactly similar to the linear one, the DH convention is made such that the relative angular velocity is equal to the joint velocity along the z, z direction, okay? So this is zi minus one, and theta dot i is the joint velocity. If you look, this one is conceptually equal to this one, okay? So this is the added value, the, the main added value of the DH convention, not only the fact that we share the, the frames, but the fact that uh, it will simplify a lot uh, all those concepts. Then if uh, we just uh, apply the equations, uh, we come with a p dot i equal p dot i minus one plus omega i uh, cross product and so on. Here we are missing the, the relative linear velocity because the joint is rotational. So the relative linear velocity is zero, okay? Okay, so we do have those two expressions, nice. So am I able now to, to compute the Jacobian? Yes, we are almost there. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's really a matter of, uh, of notation and then we should focus the attention on a couple of points. I have a couple of graphs to, to try to understand a little bit better. But let me write the Jacobian in that way. If I consider the velocity What is the result? The first what? She's saying the first line and you're saying the first column. Column, column, column. column. We, we agree? Okay. So, if I consider a very specific uh, input, let me say, I do have uh, the, a strong interpretation for each three by one block of the Jacobian. This three by one vector is the contribution to the linear velocity of the end effector given by the movement of the first joint. This three by one is the contribution to the angular velocity of the end effector given by the movement of the first joint, and so on. And this is linear. I can, I can sum the contribution. So it means that I can actually compute JP1 and JO1 symbolically because I do know I do know that this is related to p dot one, okay? And I just compute all the contribution, the generic contribution here. Let us 
try to understand a little bit better JP1, JP2, and so on. Okay? Planar tree link. Try to make a similar draw to this one. Okay. Let us imagine that 2 and 3 are 0. And the velocity for the first one is 1. Okay? What is the linear velocity of the end effect? Is the same as the disk. Okay? So the same as the disk means that this is what? Well, this vector is JP1. Okay? It's actually is JP1. Uh, sorry. JP1 is this one. <laughs> okay. We have to compute it. This is very interesting because I have a geometric reading of the column of the geometric. And what is the contribution of the second one? Zero, zero, one. It's clear why? I have uh, instantaneously to consider a rotational motion with this as a region, this as the end of the movement. Yes? From the beginning? No, 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 it was this, it was this example. The, yes, my, from the first joint to the second. From yes. the first? If you look the Jacobian JP1, JP2, JP3, those are the direction multiplied by the intensity of the angular velocity of the joint, and by making a vector sum, I have the final velocity of the end effect. If you remember a little bit of geometry, it will be useful later on in order to understand how to compose, compose the, the, the velocity intentionally, let me say. For the moment, we are just moving the joint around. Then we will try to do it intentionally. Okay, and uh, this interpretation will also help us in understanding some uh, critical situations. Okay. 
So, the angular velocity, if the joint is prismatic, the contribution to the angular velocity of Q dot i is, is zero, okay? We, we already saw it. So it means that the three components of the Jacobian associated to the angular velocity of joint I are zero, zero, zero. Okay, let me come back here. Let us pretend that this is, I'm sorry, what a prismatic, uh, did I say prismatic, okay? For a prismatic, I, I don't know if I say prismatic or not, but okay. So if it is prismatic, we have three zero. I mean, it's trivial. I'm on a, on a rail, I'm not changing the angular velocity, okay? The first one is a rail, for example. And so on, if I have a, a prismatic joint, the orientation component of the Jacobian are zeros. If the joint is rotational, well, thanks to the Artem artenberg Convention, I do know that Q dot I multiplied by J O I is equal the joint velocity, and I know the direction is Z I minus one. But this is Q dot by definition. It means that I do know the three components of uh, the orientation of the Jacobian. And this is the unit vector Z I minus one. one. Let us pay attention that this is configuration dependent. Okay? It changes uh, according to the configuration of the robot. Mm -hmm. The linear velocity needs just one addition more for the joint, rotational joint. For the prismatic, it's very nice and it's very easy and it's similar to the orientation, okay? So the component for the position part of the Jacobian is equal to a unit vector, a proper unit vector. For a rot rotational part, well, for the rotational part, I think this interpretation it's the same as this one says all, in the sense that what is the contribution? Well, the contribution is given by the relative angular velocity cross product a proper vector position. I make my computation and I see that I have a certain expression for JPI. It is not important now to see Yes, it's a little more complex than the other, but it's not complex. It's just the need for a cross product. But what is important is that I need to know the unit vector for Z minus one, but I also need to know these positions of the intermediate frame, okay? But, I mean, it's, it's obvious from the intuitive aspect. If I want to know the propagation of velocities, I need to know the position of the intermediate point. And I do have all those information by the direct kinematics. So everything is uh, uh, at my availability. And this is the overall slides that allow you to compute the Jacobian. The Jacobian has n columns. The columns are uh, six by one vector, three components of position, three components of orientation. If the joint is, is uh, prismatic, those are the six components, unit vector and zero, zero, zero. If the joint is rotational, those are the six components, a cross product here and then a unit vector. In order to know the unit vectors, I need to compute them simply composing the rotations of the various frame. 
in the position of the end effector given by the direct kinematics, and the position of the intermediate frames is given again by direct kinematics. I just stopped earlier with respect to the direct kinematics uh, until the end effect. I do know all the variables. I have all the instruments to compute them. I have a compact notation to, uh, to do it. We will build the Jacobian. But what is most important is the meaning of the Jacobian, is the, the capability to work with the Jacobian. OK, uh, I have the Jacobian with respect to a base frame, but as I told you, I always have different fixed frame because of the different tools and, and object to manipulate and so on. If I want to, I build my Jacobian with respect to the base frame, and, and they come to uh, another another belt, another lab, uh, another uh, applications. Do I have uh, to recompute the Jacobian from scratch? No. I have uh, a simple relationship that relates the Jacobians uh, between two different but fixed frames, okay? So one that you compute your Jacobian, it's okay. You have an information that uh, you will bring with you for all uh, the activists that you need. Okay, let us see some Jacobians. I have uh, three rotational joints. So come back here. Three rotational joints means that I need to apply this one with respect to the index i, one, two, three. Look that here I always have PE, but i changes for the other three quantities. So here, if you look, I have zero, i minus one, and P3. In the second column, still I have P3, but one, that one, that one, P1. In the same here, okay? Now, this is a six by three matrix. Uh, it's scaring me a little bit, six by three matrix, because I have three joint and I'm computing a velocity of six components. It's not really something, something is not very. Uh, what is the problem? Why I, I don't like a, a Jacobian with three, with the six? Uh, lines and three columns. I have, I, I'm computing three linear velocities and three angular, three components for the linear velocity, sorry, and three components for the angular velocity of the end effect. But my structure is a planar one. So basically, the linear velocity going out from the plane will always be zero. Okay, so and the angular velocity can only have uh, the component going out from the plane for obvious reasons. So, uh, I gave you the equation for six components, but in this case, obviously, uh, some of them uh, are always known. Okay, I know P0, that is zero, zero, zero. The other one, here in the slides, we decided to, to write the equations, but you are never going to write the equations. You are always going to ask for the value to your direct kinematics library function, okay? Here is just to, to touch with our ends what kind of functions we are going to meet during those operations. And then Z is always a zero, zero, 001 because of this particular structure. So the Jacobian is this one. As I told you, there are several zero lines. It means that whatever joint velocity you assign to your robot, you will never be able to have a linear velocity going out from the plane, okay? Now, this is very evident. It's, it's trivial, what I'm saying. But the same concept will be hidden in some other structure without uh, zero, clear. The Jacobian is configuration dependent, yes, because 
S1 means sinus theta 1, 1, 2 means theta 1 plus theta 2, and so on. Every time that your configuration change, your Jacobian change. Here, those are the three velocities. In this case, I clearly have three different velocities, okay? It changes with the configuration. Then, here, if, the, if only the position is of interest, what does it mean? For certain applications, I don't need to control all the degrees of freedom the end factor. So I may work with only subset of the Jacobian, okay? And in this case, for example, I have a two by three, so more columns than, than rows. Anthropomorphic robots, without going into the details, but look, this is the same, exactly the same as the previous one, okay? The equation is the same because there are three rotational joints. They just differ when I compute the exact value for the, for the position and the unit vectors. And this is the Jacobian. Well, this Jacobian does not have zeros, okay? But I do know that I have three degrees of freedom. From the intuition, but also uh, clearly from the mathematical perspective, I cannot assign six components of velocity to the end effector with three degrees of freedom. And this is somehow hidden in the Jacobian, okay? In this case, the rank is three, so in this case, it's, it's obvious also. Okay, six degrees of freedom, same for robot. I have uh, a very complex uh, symbolic expression, but conceptually, nothing is changing since the planner, okay? Conceptually, they're all the same. Here I can appreciate that there is a prismatic joint, so the third column is easier. Okay, so we are going to stop here. I'll postpone the analytical Jacobian, actually for next Friday, because next Monday we will go in the, we will make a practice. Uh, are you going to have all your laptop or, or uh, Yes? yes. Uh, so, do you prefer to do it here or in the... In <coughs> no, the lab, there is no room for all of you. I mean, the, in the room for... Maybe, maybe, maybe... I don't know. Because you are 30, 35. Maybe there is more room there. I don't, I don't know. Huh? Just four. Maybe... There is more room for you because the chairs uh, can be moved. I mean, here you are a little bit too. Okay, let, let us see it at uh, uh, 4 next Monday. Uh, I'll show you. No, but we'll see. If you want to start, download this. this Unfortunately, yes. Okay, so you can start download uh, uh, VREP. Uh, it's free for educational use. It's uh, coppelia.com, so www.coppelia.com. But we will see next Monday, just in case. Uh, 
I prefer not to use graphical rendering for the first practicing. So in the beginning, you will see only numbers and uh, some very basic plots that you are going to produce. Only after that we consolidate the understanding of what's going on, we are going to use uh, this software just as a render to appreciate the movement that you are doing by controlling the robot, okay? For the moment, just download it and see if, I mean, it runs without burning your hard disk, okay? See you next, ah, and next Wednesday there is no lesson, okay? So see you.